When last we heard Voices of the People, they had this summer series thing going on, the inaugural, and uh, my boy Derek was in and uh, uh, kind of, uh, he outcooled me, you know. I, <laughs> when you hear Derek speak, he's, uh, he's got this voice that uh, gets your attention. But uh, after the summer series, those who saw it, uh, he also plays to get your attention. And uh, Voices of the People, well, they've got a new series coming up. And joining us in studio is uh, Derek Mention. Uh, Derek, Voices of the People, Polk State Humanities Professor and uh, musician extraordinaire and oh, all around cool guy. Listen to this. Thank yeah, you, you like Thanks, that? <laughs> you, want, you want me to turn that in, into a ringtone I've for you? I'm to take you on the road with me, is what I want to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the stage? <laughs> you got it. You're hired. <laughs> got the gig, huh? Right, absolutely. I'll turn that into a ringtone for you. <laughs> please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Derek, it's good to see you again. Good to be back. Thanks, yeah. man. Thanks. And, and, and you brought a friend along with you. I brought Daniel. I yeah. brought my cello with me. And he wants to say a little something at the end here, Yeah, I we'll think. talk about that. We'll yeah. talk to Daniel a little bit later. Sure. That's, that's kind of funky. Uh, do, do musicians usually name? I think a lot of us do. Yeah. Um, I, in the old days, a lot of the, the, the quintessential big names of, of, of classical music, and of course jazz, named their instruments. You know, B.B. King has Lucille. Yeah, Lucille. Uh, oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> and so lots of, uh, quote, unquote, classical musicians name their instruments, I think. And this is, this is my re most recent acquisition, and uh, had them for a few years. I call him Daniel. Yeah. Why Daniel? When I purchased this instrument, uh, I had to, once I got the okay that I could get it. <laughs> I, I, it. I, I, I take it you have a boss that handles financing? Well, in this case I did. I, I, I bought it on terms and usually you buy these instruments, you cut a check and that's it. Yeah. Well, I'm not that type of guy, so I got some terms worked out. They said yes to the terms, but I had to wait I think 21 days to find out that they were going to actually ship it to me and that they would accept my payment. Something like that happened. And I was like, you know, sitting on nails and, and pins waiting. And I recall there's this, uh, this uh, uh, passage in the Bible about uh, Daniel who sends a prayer up to God and it takes 21 days for it to come back. So that, I said, this has got to be my boy. That is cool. <laughs> and I realized I just bought a gun and didn't have to wait at all oh, you, for right. it. Right. <laughs> well, yeah. Did you name it, though? No. No. Okay. No. <laughs> well, you still I, got that I, gun. I, oh, yeah. I still have it. I just don't want to get that close to it. Right. I understand. <laughs> Trust me. I understand. So other, other, uh, other uh, instruments, have you, have, you, have you named them? This is, I was thinking of this the other day. I had a, a Polish instrument or a, uh, an instrument from Chicago made by a Polish maker, uh, Stanley Kurnoziak. It was named Pavel, yeah. Polish for Paul. Before that was a manual, I believe. Uh, and before that was Dupor. I named my first nice cello uh, after Rostropovich's Strad. So the, the, the Rostropovich is one of the most important cellists in the history of cello playing. And he had a Stradivari named Dupor. So yeah. that's that's the lineage of my cello. So that is yeah. very cool. See, that's 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 something you'll never even know. You know, <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> People be chanting it, be chanting the cello's name after right? this series, right? Daniel, <laughs> Daniel. I hope so. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So let's let's get to this series. Uh, sure. let, let's backtrack a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll talk about the success of, of the summer tour. So, you know, Voices of the People has been in existence since 2012. We've had two very successful seasons that I'm very proud of. And we started because of the interest of our audience. We had our first summer concert. So it was the inaugural concert of what we'll be doing. We'll have summer concerts every season. And we had one June 28th with a wonderful violist by the name of Carl St. Jacques from Miami. And he came and did a really mondo, huge viola recital, totally solo, and did some amazingly large and, and complex works of the 20th century, neoclassicist uh, composers. It was very well received. Uh, we had a smaller audience, but that was okay. For chamber music that we do, we don't sort of mind sometimes going into smaller spaces. This was at the Lakeland Unitarian Universalist congregation. And we had a small but diverse population there, our audience there. And they asked questions. They heard the stories about the acquisition of his new viola that he named Belinda. Nice. <laughs> and uh, it was great. It was great. And then we, you know, we start up our series now, September 6th. And he'll be back. We're going to be playing two piano quintets of uh, Rayfon Williams and um, uh, Franz Schubert, the Trout Quintet. 
And we have, I think, eight concerts coming up this year. It's going to be big. Six last year, eight this season. So we're really happy. So right off the top of your head, you don't have to name exact mm -hmm. venues, but of those eight concerts, mm -hmm. uh, all around the county? They will be. They will be mostly at the main campuses of Polk State. Uh, they will be at the Lakeland campus, or there'll be at least an open rehearsal and a history of bebop performance and sort of presentation in February. There will be uh, several concerts on the Lake Wales Performing Arts uh, campus. There will also be one in the Winter Haven, several in the Winter Haven uh, uh, Fine Arts Auditorium on the Winter Haven campus. So we're making our rounds, as they say, mm -hmm. making our rounds. And a lot of great people coming. Kelly Hall Tompkins, wonderful world-class violinist who uh, is going to be part of our um, offering to the Polk State uh, Globalization Initiative. And she speaks like seven languages and is an amazing violinist. Carl Cranmer from Westchester, PA, is going to be coming down, virtuoso pianist, and so many wonderful people coming down. Sean Edmonds, uh, a trumpet player that used to tour at the Basie Band, is going to be part of the uh, part of the uh, bebop presentation. So really exciting times ahead. When you find that you perform for the younger audiences, um, what's what's the reception like? Well, you know, I'm known more, as Professor mentioned, to the younger cats in, in, in Polk County, and you know, they they know that I uh, they know that I have some sort of background in the arts. But when they see me, not being the funny guy in the classroom, but actually a tails or whatever, or a Nehru suit playing, they're like, "Wow, we never thought that we would like classical music." But yeah. because they can warm to my personality, they find entree or an entryway into classical music that they might not have otherwise. So it's generally well received. I get a lot of people writing papers for my classes saying, "I'm, I'm glad I went, but it's kind of like cartoon music. I don't want to go back." And that's fine too. I mean, my thing is, if one knows why they don't like something and can express it, they have the right not to exactly. like it. Exactly. You, you, so you see what I'm saying? You, you got to so try. Fine. You got to try it before. Absolutely. As Absolutely. opposed to me, don't try me till you knock me. <laughs> <laughs> so you do it the inverse way. Yeah, exactly. I remember that. <laughs> I, I let people talk bad about me, and it's just like, and then they meet me and they go, you know, you're not as bad as what I thought. Don't try me till you knock me. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslexia. It's a horrible disease. <laughs> <laughs> you know, prior to the, prior to this gig, I was uh, doing mornings uh, country music, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the musicians uh, that I talked to, you know, you, you talk about what their inspirations were, what uh, you know, what they listened to. Right. Um, when it comes to classical performances, I, I, it's just I, I, I imagine that's a pool you have to go to that that sure. is that is difficult to find. Shit, somewhat, sure. I, you know, my, my parents, my late father and, and, and my very present mom, would listen to a lot of Basie and Ellington and Brahms and Beethoven. We had those LPs in our house. So growing up, I heard all of this music, so it, it sounded just fine to me. So I grew very early on to have an appreciation for that which we call classical music. And then they took me to a lot of concerts. I've actually seen uh, the Basie band with Basie when he was still living. Um, my mom actually took me to see Liberace of all people. I'm glad I didn't go that way. I, d I don't know that I'd look so good in hot pants, but you know, I, I'd rather the cello. But anyway. Uh, did, did you see the HBO thing? I did. They, they, there was an HBO thing that they did and they brought, he, he actually wore one of the uniforms and he said the thing weighed like 38 oh, really? pounds. Wow. And was hot. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. That's that's scary, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 I did go to some of those concerts. Yeah. Right. And I I went to uh, what we call classical concerts, and I was frankly I was moved by all of them. And I I am a jazz bass player. I am a, what we call a classical cellist, and I'm a composer and arranger as well. So I found ways to feed into different rivulets uh, or tributaries of this ocean that is music. I'm able to do many different things from d different genres within music. So I, I have what I feel is a, a, a well-balanced musical life. I don't just, I'm not lopsided or top heavy in one area. Mm -hmm. I'm able to kind of flow through a bunch of different, you know, rivulets of this, of this stream. Yeah. When you present this music, uh, especially to the to the younger crowd, because yeah. I mean, I mean, the whole thing about this is is you pick it up and try and take it a little bit further than what you found it. Sure. And and you're hoping to inspire them to do the set. Absolutely. The same? One beautiful thing about Polk County and about Polk State as well is that we have wonderful musical outlets. We have the Imperial Symphony. Uh, Polk State has the, the, the concert band, they have uh, smaller ensembles as well. 
they have uh, the vocal jazz ensemble and the choir. The one thing that we're able to provide is a, a consistent attention uh, and, and set of offerings from the chamber music repertoire, that which is smaller in scope, that which originally was written for smaller settings, chambers or, or, or rooms for, for, for castles and, and other places. Um, it's important that in addition to these great organizations that we have at, uh, in Polk County, that students are able to see their teachers still out in the field making it happen, as it were. Because some of them want to go on into music and are scared, like, well, my dad told me to be an engineer because there's no money to be made in music. <laughs> uh, you know, and I'm a humanities professor, but yeah. I'm still, uh, I've got my musical career going. And sometimes when they're able to see that, they say the magic statement, maybe I can do it. And I'm like, yes, you can. And I think that's very important to kind of enlighten and motivate younger minds, as well as provide, for lack of a better term, entertainment for others. You know, I don't know. I don't know that I so much see this as entertainment. I see it as an art form for which we want to create a, a culture of, of, of appreciation and enrichment. Uh, but it's not bad that some people see it as entertainment. So we want to provide something for all people on all those fronts. One thing that our board of county commissioners talks about is bringing quality of life events, features to this county, right. whether it be our rails to trails, whether it be our infrastructure sure. or the arts. Right. You obviously are very well attached to the arts. I and uh, talk, talk a little bit about how this community embraces what you do. Well, first and foremost, from the very first concert, our inaugural concert that we had at, at November 28th, 2012, I'll never forget, we had well over 120 people there. They came out, you know, and as I told you, we, there hasn't been a history in recent years of any concentrated effort to present chamber concerts. So to go out on a limb, have the Lakeland Provost back me and say, hey, even if you don't succeed, we've got X amount of dollars for you. To know that people came out and asked for more and continued to come out and to get sort of involved with suggesting some programming and whatnot really, really uh, uh, turned me on and fascinated me and made me very motivated to build bigger and better uh, seasons. Uh, in addition to that, you know, there's a component of the series where we have students come out and read works from varying uh, philosophical tracts. We have professors from the college uh, uh, read as well. So there's a lot of uh, interaction going on and a lot of camaraderie being built in the season, which is very important. That's why we call it Voices of the People. We ultimately want to be a platform for many different voices to be shared with the community. And they've loved it. I'm very happy to say that it's, it's been a success because of the love from the community. We've got just a little bit of time left. Sure. Can you uh, introduce Daniel to, uh, to our viewing audience? So here's Daniel, uh, a, a French cello that's about three years older than I am. And I'm going to play you uh, something called Di Forella, the, the Trout. And that's one of the melodies that you'll hear on the uh, September 6th concert. I got to see you there, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> Derek, that, that is outstanding, man. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. And I really do appreciate you coming in and uh, sharing that with us. My pleasure. Anytime. Yeah, and, and anytime that uh, you have anything you need to promote, man, uh, that chair is always open for you, oh, man, because that, that, that is sweet. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> uh, it. He is, Derek mentioned, uh, he, Voices of the People, Polk State Humanities Professor, and you can catch this uh, throughout the year. You make sure you want to check it out. Voices of the People performing art series going all around uh, uh, throughout Polk County, whether it be uh, either one of the uh, Polk State uh, campuses. Now, you're thinking to yourself, what exactly is this Voices of the People? This is Polk County's premier chamber music series. And uh, the Polk State Humanities College professor, Derek Menchin, he just played it for you. He's, the, uh, he's an accomplished cellist. He founded the Innovative Series, and uh, it's something that you've got to check out. 
uh, look for it around the county. Now, if you need more information, uh, give them a call 863-669-2928.